do you have a big thick lump or bump down here or up here? This is brutal. These things hurt. And we're gonna show you the absolute best tricks, the new stuff that you probably haven't tried that can make this pain go away. We're gonna talk about the best massages, the best stretches, the best medications, the best injections. Is surgery needed? What does the new research say? And we're starting right now. Guys, thank you for subscribing, for liking, and we're gonna keep bringing you the absolute best foot health videos on YouTube. So a plantar fibroma is a bump. It can generally occur in the arch. It is generally on the inside of the arch or the center of the arch. So what happens is this is technically a tumor. So there's cells called myofibroblasts and fibroblasts that actually grow and form a lump. There's a lot of theories on why this happened. To me personally, what makes sense is it's scar tissue, it's tightness, it's buildup of the plantar fascia ligament. It's kind of like a thick Achilles tendon or Achilles tendonitis. To me, it doesn't seem like a secret, but the studies won't really confirm what this is. But the solutions are very predictable. And personally, in the office, I feel like this goes away relatively quickly if we do the right stuff. When I'm researching and looking at this research, they make it seem so hard. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something because these things almost always get better for us and we don't have to do surgery. And this is the stuff we do. But first things first, the number one secret is always getting proper diagnosis. The biggest mistake people make is they don't go to their doctor, they don't get an x-ray, they don't get an ultrasound if needed, they don't get evaluated. I've seen people with pine needles stuck in their foot thinking that it was this, trying to treat it. I've seen people with ruptured plantar fascias, I've seen people with huge bone spurs thinking that they had plantar fibromatosis. Don't waste years of your life, tons of money, ruining your athletic career or your work to treat the wrong thing. It's worth a visit if you're here watching this video and it's causing you that much pain. If we know that it's inside the plantar fascia in the office, we can grab an ultrasound. So an ultrasound, you can actually see a big lump with fluid, but I'm not gonna get too carried away with ultrasounds and MRIs because realistically, it's pretty clear to see that it's a plantar fibroma and we can start getting it better pretty quickly. The first thing you wanna do is control the pain. So I'm a huge fan of things like Biofreeze right here. This right away, all you do, it's a little roll on thing. You can grab it for a couple bucks, you roll it on, it's safe, it doesn't enter your body. And what happens is the swelling and soreness can come down. This is just like icing. So an ice bottle with massage can work really well or a massage roller stick can work really well. A great way to get rid of the pain is to get some of these devices. So an ice bottle, you can do a plastic bottle or a metallic bottle and you freeze this. Be careful with the cans because they can explode, but you roll it back and forth. It'll both relieve the pain by icing it and gradually over time that can break up that lump bump, that thick scarred collagen, that plantar fibroma. This device right here, it's a little bit on the pricey side you know, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd say the ice bottle is easier. Look at that, it doesn't stick to the ground. So I gave that a thumbs down right there. And, but that's great for the calf. That's great for like chest muscles. That's great for the hamstring. A ball like this, you know, these are like a dollar anywhere. They usually come with foot products, but right there, you can use a lacrosse ball, a tennis ball, these little rubber spiked balls. These can break it up. At the same time, standing on it will put even more pressure on it. So I got a couple different ones. These work really well. Hey, over time, if you can relieve the stress and use this to break it up, that nodule should get better. But what you really wanna do is you wanna stretch that nodule out because realistically, the tighter your calf, the tighter your hamstring, the tighter your plantar fascia, the more likely you are to develop a nodule. So what happens is stretch out your hamstring, stretch out your calf muscle. And I like to start with a towel because usually people who have a nodule are pretty stiff through other parts of their body. So stretch out that calf muscle, stretch out that plantar fascia. I always recommend massaging ahead of time because studies do show that if you massage 
and break up some of that tissue, you get a much better stretch and it locks in the results better. So that's science for you. A heat bag can work really well as well. That can make a big difference for people. You can even get up in the morning and just massage it with your fingers for like 30 seconds and that makes a big difference in the morning. Shockwave therapy works really well. I love shockwave therapy. This is the number one use for shockwave therapies. If somebody has a plantar fibroma in the bottom of their foot, I use shockwave therapy to break it up. That works great. We have it available in our office for fibroma lumps. But again, this is unfortunately something that's not available very easily and it can be expensive. So when you get up in the morning, you wanna get something supportive like this. So as soon as you get up, massage it, get a good supportive slipper with something like this built in. Simply taking your first few steps when you step and your ligament stretches, see how this stretches through here? and presses in there, that could cause enough bruising to cause pain the rest of the day. So get into something cushioned and supportive like a slipper first thing in the morning. Does surgery make sense for something like this? Personally, I don't think so. I've tried it a few times for like really big ones, ones that are the size of a fist. But realistically, if you cut the whole thing out, you're missing your plantar fascia and it's scar tissue. You wanna to get to the root cause. And the root cause is that one knee, one hip, one, back injury is causing you to twist your foot out and when you land on it, your plantar fascia stretches. So from here to here, stretches out. As an example, take a look right here. When your foot steps out, that stretches the plantar fascia. That puts a ton of pressure on that area. The nodule is going to develop on the tighter side. So take a look right here. I have some motion in my left foot, but more motion in my right foot. My left foot, when I walk, has to make up for that by turning out absorbing more through the knee, through the hip, that can cause some hip and knee pain. But that nodule is probably going to develop in the left foot, which is the tighter foot. That's usually what happens. And when we study people, we notice these types of things. That's why nodules really happen. That stretch keeps causing the pain. You can't just cut it out and keep walking the same way because it will re-tear, it will reform scar tissue, and you'll have that lump again, and you'll have wasted six months of surgical recovery. What you really wanna do, you have to get the pressure off of it. How do you do that? You buy a low cost orthotic like this. So take a look at this. You wanna grab something soft that's flexible. If your lump is right here, you wanna take some lipstick and you wanna color on it. And what happens is you take that lipstick and you press it into the insole. And what happens is you then see where it's marked and you cut out this whole hole. So you cut out that hole in your orthotic and every time you walk that lump goes into a groove. So it goes into a groove and there's absolutely no pressure on it. So take some lipstick, take an insole, mark where it is by pressing your foot onto it. Use scissors to cut out that hole. I'm not gonna waste an orthotic right now doing it, but I do this thousands of times in office and it works pretty much right away. Is it a permanent fix? It's not permanent, but over a month or two, your swelling drops like a rock until you can do other things to make it go away. So what you wanna do is, here's really the key, get good supportive slippers. Look it, I have both cushion and support there. And what you also wanna do is if you live in like Florida or a warm weather country or state, being in Michigan, I don't have that. You could also get, look at this, sandals with a heel built into it. So look at how supportive that sandal is. And what's the reason? The reason is a good supportive sandal or slipper. Look at, this is a custom orthotic here. As I'm pushing down, look at the arch is not flattening out. But watch this right here. With my hand, it flattens out on flat surface that stretches the ligament. What happens is pretend you had this with a hole cut out into it, just like I draw, drew with the lipstick earlier or pretended to draw or a cushioned slipper with an arch support where your foot's not flattening. So that plantar fascia is not stretching and it's not twisting and you're not landing on it. So you wanna accomplish two things. Like if I was an engineer, I would want that plantar fascia to stop stretching and I would want that lump to stop pressing into the ground. If you have a hole cut out, plus you have the heel lifted and a good supportive shoe, then that lump's not gonna stretch and it's not gonna get bruised up. And in, with enough time, it will get better. Here's another thing, look it. If the shoe is flexible, the, your plantar fascia gets flexible. So watch this right here. If I stand, oh, it stretches, the ligament stretches, that knot recreates. So a flimsy, flexible shoe like this, if you can do this with your shoe, it's not good for your plantar fascia. But watch this. 
I can't bend a big shoe like this. So this is called a Hoka, for example, but there's lots of good supportive shoes. As an example, as an example, here's another good one. This is a good one. It's not quite as expensive as the Hoka, but it can work really well. And then you have an insert with a hole cut out. You don't need a hard insert, even a soft insert. Look at it's very flexible and flimsy, and you can cut out the hole because these are only like $20. And the last thing you want to do is you got to get to the root cause. You can't just keep walking huge shoes and orthotics for the rest of your life. You have to massage it and you have to stretch it out. And then you wear the good shoes, the inserts, the sandals, the slippers, and then you are going to feel like a million bucks. Start exercising. Start rotating your ankle in the morning. You have to loosen up your ankles. So I'm talking like 20 to 30 seconds. This will take pressure off your plantar fascia and loosen up your joints. And then look at that makes you a little bit more flexible. And ideally you want to do your massaging here first before you even stretch, but I won't go and reshow the same stuff. Check that earlier in the video. And then you do some stretching. So take a look with a towel, stretching your plantar fascia, your calf muscles, look at you get a lot looser through there and your nodule gradually gets stretched out. It gets less sore. It gets less pain overall. And then you do the same thing to the other side, just massage it and gently stretch it. Don't ever cause pain. I like to stretch both at once by creating a towel like that. It keeps pressure right now off the nodule, so it's not putting direct pressure on there, but it gently stretches it out using gravity. I like to hold my phone while I'm doing this and you just look over whatever your emails for the day and you get a nice 30 second to one minute stretch. And then the inside of your groin, because if your hips are turning and your legs are turning, you're walking on the inside of your arch and that could aggravate the nodule. And then an ankle stretch board, barefoot that can hurt, but you can see right here that uses your body weight, kind of the opposite of the towel. You can use a towel, but here you work your way up over the course of a month or two months or three months and gradually go from five degrees to like 30, 40 degrees, this puts less stress on your calf, your plantar fascia. It makes your joints more flexible to absorb this stress so that you don't develop arthritis, ligament damage, and nodules like plantar fibromas. That's really the trick. I got a little bit of kid's milk there from my kids. They got it dirty. And then these devices work well too, like the half moon shape, but you want to be wearing your orthotic and a good shoe while you're doing this. So you can see right there, this would hurt a lot, especially if you had a nodule and you didn't have a good shoe and a good orthotic. So you want to put that good orthotic and protect that nodule, probably something soft if you're starting out with a lot of pain. And that will let you keep that pressure off that plantar fibroma nodule, that plantar fasciitis pain, that heel spur pain, any of those lumps or bumps. So that's how you wanna take care of this stuff. That's how you get this feeling a whole lot better. So you can see, I can crank it up all the way there and get a nice stretch after a little while. I do this a lot, so I've acquired a lot of flexibility. I can get way past my toes at this point, but you've got to work on that yourself. Stretch your hamstring, stretch your foot, use these few devices, they're not bad. Guys, thank you for subscribing, for liking, and we're gonna keep bringing you the absolute best foot health videos on YouTube.